Hey there, high-level listeners. We've got a brand new English vocabulary episode for you today from us here at High Level Listening. Today, we'll be chatting about a topic that we all deal with on a daily basis, money, banking, and finances. Whether you're trying to save for the future, figure out how to budget your daily expenses, or just get better at managing your money, we've got some valuable tips and English vocabulary to help you out today. Yes, that's right. Thanks very much for joining us here on High Level Listening. This is our YouTube channel where we give you side-by-side -side British and American English with me, Mark from the UK and Kat from the US. And today, like usual, we've got two scripts for you, one focusing more on American English from Kat and one in more British English with me. We'll read through them and then we'll go back to the start and break down the most important vocabulary expressions and the most interesting grammar points and explain them in more detail. Uh, like always, if you want a PDF transcript of this episode and all of our other episodes as well, you can join us as a High Level Listening member. There's a link on how to do that in the description below. But yes, let's jump into today's topic. I will ask Kat and she will read her script first. So Kat, what's your approach to managing your money? So when it comes to managing my finances, I like to keep things organized and straightforward. The first thing I do is set up a monthly budget. I break down my income and expenses into categories like rent, groceries, utilities, and a bit of discretionary spending. When it comes to savings, I'm a firm believer in the idea of paying yourself first. As soon as I get paid, I automatically transfer a portion of my paycheck into a savings account. This helps me build up an emergency fund, which is crucial for those unexpected expenses that always seem to pop up. Another tip I follow is keeping an eye on my day-to-day -day spending. Little things like coffee runs and impulse purchases can add up quickly, so I make sure to track everything. Overall, it's all about being financially mindful and making sure your money is working for you, not against you. All right, Mark, I'm going to ask you the same question. What's your approach to managing money? For me, managing money is all about balance and foresight. I always start by setting clear financial goals, whether it's saving up for a holiday or building up my savings for the future. I like setting a budget that's flexible, but disciplined. And uh, I use an app to track my spending in real time, which helps me avoid overspending. I allocate funds to my essentials first, like housing and food. But I also make sure to leave some room for savings and some fun money. In the UK, we often talk about putting something away for a rainy day, and I take that seriously by regularly contributing to my savings account. I just try and be smart with money, so I'm prepared for whatever life throws at me. And of course, I always keep a bit of cash on hand for emergencies, just in case. Okay, so those are our two scripts for this episode. Don't worry if you didn't catch everything. We're about to go back to the start and go through them line by line. So... Back to the beginning. How do you manage your expenses, your money, or your finances? Well, I like this question because, yeah, some of my students ask me, well, what's the difference between finances and money? I think in this situation, money, finances, expenses, this is kind of all under the same topic. It's all about money, managing your money, managing your expenses, managing your finance. That just means kind of you, how do you control them? How do you organize them? So when it comes to managing my finances, I like to keep things organized and straightforward. When it comes to managing something, you really do need to stay organized, okay? So if you are a manager, it's best that you keep your staff organized and everyone and everything is under control. So managing my finances or managing my money would be the same thing. I like to keep things organized and straightforward straightforward. I don't want to be guessing at the end of the month if I had five coffees this month or if I had 12 coffees this month. So I need something straightforward and easy. I don't want to open up an app that crashes. I don't want to be looking online for my spreadsheet so I can stay organized. I want everything to be organized and straightforward. Now, what about you, Mark? How do you manage your finances? For me, Managing money is all about balance and <laughs> foresight. So I use the same collocation as Kat. I manage money. I manage my money, manage my finances, or manage my expenses. 
you notice that we always use the plural expenses and finances, mm. Mm. but then money is uncountable. So manage right. my money. And so for me, it's all about balance. So a balance between now, enjoying my money now and in the future. So a little bit money for today, a little bit of money for the future or a bit of fun now and then a mature, serious decision for later. Let's so it's so. all about balance. <laughs> yeah, sure. And balance and foresight. Foresight, it's one word. It's not the most common word, but when you're thinking about the future, I'm looking ahead. I am using foresight. Uh, you might be more familiar with a term where you look back in the past, which is hindsight, when you look back at the past. This is the opposite, looking to the future. So retirement, savings, future purchases, holidays. So that's how I manage my money. I think about a balance between now and the future. So balance and foresight. So we've both got similar ideas, I suppose. How do you start managing your money? But the first thing I do is set up a monthly budget. Okay, this is the first thing I do. We often use the word thing when it comes to the first step, uh, the first activity, the first thing I do. The first thing I do is set up a monthly budget. Ah, the budget. The budget is how much I can spend and how much I do spend. <laughs> so hopefully your budget means that you can put some money aside at the end, but sometimes when you are making a budget, you realize you are spending too much. So my monthly budget, I break down my income and expenses. I break it down. Just like in this class, in this episode, in all of our vocabulary episodes, we break down something bigger. So we have a big piece of something and we're kind of cutting it up into little chunks, little pieces. So we are breaking it down line by line. Now I break down my income and expenses into categories. So I don't just say, okay, I can spend $1,000 this month. Well, on what? That's, that doesn't give me much information, that's too big. So we're gonna break it down into categories. Categories would be kind of similar groups of the same thing. So I have categories like rent, groceries, utilities, and a bit of discretionary spending. Now, uh, we'll go, we'll start from the beginning. My income. My income is the money I bring in, the paycheck that I receive from work my pay from work. This is my income. If I receive money, that is income. Expenses are the money that I'm spending, okay? These are my spending. So income, receiving that money. Expenses, the money I'm spending. Now, I have the categories like rent. Rent, or perhaps for some people, your mortgage. So if you own your own home, you would pay a mortgage to the bank. If you rent, you pay rent. So one of the biggest categories and one of my biggest expenses is rent. Next comes groceries. Groceries would be anything I need to eat and kind of live my daily life. Cleaning supplies, um, even some clothes and things like that. Some little items that we would get at a supermarket. These are all going to be groceries. Utilities. Utilities are all the extra pieces in the house. So I'm paying for the light bill. I'm paying the cable bill. I'm paying the internet bill. These are all called utilities. These are things that I use in my home, utilities. And a bit of discretionary spending. Now, if you like to read news articles about finance and things like that, you will see discretionary spending as kind of a more formal word. Discretionary spending is at your discretion. So whatever you would like to spend it on, that is discretionary spending. We call that extra. We sometimes call it extra spending. It could be a little bit of fun stuff. It could be uh, new school clothes for your kids this year. It's at your discretion. So it's kind of this extra spending outside of the things you have to spend on every single month. So 
Mark, uh, I think we both had a really solid big picture for a big plan for spending. Where do you usually start? I always start by setting clear financial goals, whether it's saving up for a holiday or building up my savings for the future. I like setting a budget that's flexible but disciplined. Mm. So just as Kat said, she sets a monthly budget. Set is the word I use with goals. I set clear financial goals. Clear goals are simple and it's obvious what I want. Maybe I want to save £1,000. That is a clear financial goal. Or if I set a clear budget, then yes, my limit for this month is £500. I cannot spend more than that. So setting clear financial goals helps. These goals can be very different. One financial goal could be saving up for a holiday. This is a phrasal verb that we like to use because we're native speakers. You can say save for a holiday, save for a new car. Native speakers will probably say save up for a new car, save up for a holiday or a vacation in the US. Um, maybe another financial goal could be my savings for the future. I just said save up for a car. You can also build up build up for uh, build up my savings build up my savings for retirement build up my savings for the future uh, yes so if you have a long term goal you might build up by putting away just a little bit of money each month but overall like cat i like to set a budget so set a limit that's flexible but disciplined mm. so flexible maybe i can spend a little bit more or maybe I can spend a little bit more on groceries instead of my bills or maybe I can put a little bit of uh, money into the future and less in today so it's flexible but disciplined disciplined I don't destroy my budget I don't spend <laughs> way too much and I don't go out of control as soon as I get my salary in my bank account and it looks and it feels like I'm rich for a day. So I am disciplined. I follow my budget. I don't break it, but I am still flexible at the same time. That feels like a good balance. OK, so it seems like we're both trying to be organized as well. Uh, how is that working out for you? Is it going well? Well, I mean, because uh, I set up a budget, uh, that way I know exactly where my money is going and how much I have left to allocate towards savings. Yes, if I'm organized, I know exactly where my money is going, okay? This is a common question we might ask ourselves. Where does all the money go? Where did my paycheck go? Where is all my money gone? <laughs> it's like It's like it just gets up and walks away, right? So uh, where's all my money gone? Well, I know exactly where my money is going and how much I have left to allocate towards savings. Allocate is another really good word that I think if you like to read financial articles in the news, you will see this word to allocate. Um, some other words that we like to use that are a little bit more um, easygoing would be to put aside or to um, put away or to kind of divide the money up and put it in a certain category. That's what to allocate means. And we often use this with resources and money. So let's allocate this. That means let's take a piece of this money and put it towards this. I'm going to spend money here. I'm going to spend money here. I'm going to spend money here. I'm going to allocate this money. So uh, because I know where my money is going, I know how much I have left to allocate towards savings. Now, I really want to save some money, but I'm not sure how much I can save. So now that I know my budget, now that I know my spending and I'm trying to keep track of it, I know how much I can put in my savings now. I know how much exactly that I have left to allocate towards savings because that's my biggest goal, put money into savings. Now, 
Mark, um, you know, there's so many kind of apps floating around and there's so many things to make it easier. Do you use anything to kind of help you with your budget? Yes, I do. In my script, I said I use an app to track my spending in real time, which helps me avoid overspending. So, yes, I use something to help me. It's an app on my phone. And this app was will be linked to my bank account, probably, and it will track my spending. So we've talked about my expenses. Uh, my spending, with no S, is another way. My spending this month was £2,000. I need to control my spending. Spending is money going out on things. So if I can track my spending when I buy a coffee and I spend £5, the app says £5 uh, at this coffee place. When I buy, uh, if I go to a petrol station and fill up my car, it'll be £50 in petrol. And it will track my spending. It will track every penny, track every pound and add it all up. So that helps me. That helps me see where my money is going, like Kat said. I can look back at the end of the week and go, wow, I spent a hundred pounds on coffee. Wow, uh, I need to change that. So that helps me avoid spending too much. Or in my script, I said it helps me avoid overspending. Overspending is spending too much. If you're overspending on groceries, then you're spending more than your budget. If you're overspending on food or eating out, you're spending more than your budget and you won't reach your goal. So there are lots of apps like this that will track your spending and usually give you a summary at the end of the week, the end of the day, or even the end of the month. So you can really see where all your money went and why you don't have anything left at the end. Why do you assume so, I don't have anything left? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything left to usually. Oh, no. <laughs> that's I'm projecting. But yes, so... Uh, we're talking about savings still. How do you manage to keep up with savings? So when it comes to saving in general, I'm a firm believer in the idea of paying yourself first. As soon as I get paid, I automatically transfer a portion of my paycheck into a savings account. Now, this has become kind of a pretty popular, uh, let's say, method for saving. Now, there are so many self-help books, so many money books out there. There are so many different methods for how to budget, how to save money, how to get out of debt, and how uh, to, you know, control and manage your finances. But for me, I'm going to give what I usually do. When it comes to saving, so when I'm talking about saving, when it comes to saving, I'm a firm believer in the idea of paying yourself first. There's lots of methods out there. I think one is like the 30, 30, 20 or something like that. No, 30, 30, 40, 30% 30 spending, 30% and then 40% like savings. I don't remember that one. I know one. what you mean. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know the numbers, yeah, yeah, but I know what you called. mean. Yeah, I've heard that. So yeah. I'm a firm believer in the idea of this method called paying yourself first. As soon as I get paid, all right, that income, that paycheck, as soon as I get paid, maybe it's weekly or monthly. I automatically transfer a portion of my paycheck into a savings account. So let's look at some of these words. As soon as I get paid. So that's the moment when my paycheck, we say, hits my account. When my paycheck hits my account, I automatically transfer. Automatic transfers are really helpful because you tell the computer, you tell your bank, Every Monday, I want to transfer $200 to my savings account. So you get paid maybe on Friday. Then Monday morning, your bank automatically transfers that money out of your account. When we transfer money, we send money from one place to another, okay? Automatic transfers happen. You don't have to do anything. The computer does it for you. So as soon as I get paid, I automatically transfer a portion, a portion, a piece, a certain amount, maybe a portion of my paycheck. My paycheck is the check, the money that I received from my company, from my boss, from work. That is my paycheck. Usually we have a weekly paycheck, 
biweekly paycheck, monthly paycheck, something like that. I transfer a portion of my paycheck into a savings account. So my checking account is usually where the money shows up. And then I take a piece. I put it into a separate account, a savings account. That works for me. I want to hear uh, about you, Mark. How do you normally organize your budget? I also allocate funds to my essentials first, like housing and food. But I also make sure to leave room for savings and some fun money. So Cap kind of mentioned this earlier, the important categories. I think everybody has their essential expenses first, housing and food. Kat also mentioned utilities, rent and groceries. Yeah, these are the most important things that you have to spend money on every month. I'm calling these my essentials. So I allocate funds to my essentials first. Funds is another word for money. So we've got my budget, my income, my paycheck, my money, my funds, my finances. I've got loads of different words for money. I also allocate or put my money towards my essentials first, like housing. The pronunciation's a bit weird because I live in a house, but the category mm. for rent or mortgage is housing with a Z. So it's housing and food, which is groceries, like Kat said. However, I don't put all my funds into essentials. I don't uh, I keep some of it aside. I make sure to leave room for savings and some fun money. Mm -hmm. so My favorite. Savings. <laughs> uh -huh. Fun money. <laughs> some fun money. So, yes, maybe I've got a thousand pounds and I put, you know, 800 towards essentials. I've got 200 pounds left over. And that could be for savings or it could be some fun money. <laughs> fun money is money for fun things, going out with my friends, going out to a nice restaurant, buying some concert tickets, going to another city or going on a little trip. Anything that is fun to do and is not essential to your survival or housing situation is fun money. So buying a new video game, going to the cinema, going out for coffee, all of that is fun money. And it's a fun way to talk about these this extra budget you have where you can just enjoy yourself and don't worry about the rent and groceries. Don't worry about your budget. Just enjoy yourself. Have some fun money. Okay, Kat, why do you put money aside into your savings account? What is that for? Well, this helps me build up an emergency fund, which is crucial for those unexpected expenses that always seem to pop up. I know they're unexpected, but they seem to always happen. <laughs> not really sure how that works, really. Now, for me, having some money and putting money aside, which means to take money and kind of forget about it, right? Put it aside so I can't touch it, so I don't use it for my fun money, right? This helps me build up an emergency fund. Mark talked about this earlier, save up, build up. And what I like about the word up is I have a goal in mind. Like Mark has a goal. I want to save a thousand pounds. I want to save a thousand US dollars. I want to save this money. And so I'm going to save up, up, up until I reach my goal, right? That's why I like that word up, build up, save up. Uh, we usually have that goal in mind. So I want to build up an emergency fund. A fund would be a a, you know, a pile of money, a, gr a group of money in a way. Um, so yeah, a fund would be money, a money goal. So I have an emergency fund. So if, uh, you know, I accidentally need to spend 500 extra dollars, it's not going to ruin my month. I have some money set aside ready for emergencies, which is crucial. Crucial is very important. For those unexpected expenses. Oh, I like this. Unexpected expenses. You know, there's always something going on and you think, this is the month. I'm going to save all this money and I'm just going to keep my savings account nice and high. I've built it up. It's great. Oh, 
oh, my car broke down. Or, oh my gosh, we had a storm and my fence is broken. Or, ah, oh, my cat got sick, I had to take it to the vet. These are unexpected expenses. Even though emergencies happen, things happen in life, you don't always know what they're going to be or how much they're going to be. And they always seem to pop up, especially when you're trying to save money and then someone gets sick, something breaks, you have to fix something, you have to do something, you know, they, they just pop up, they pop up, they come out of nowhere. All right, well, Mark, this is what I try to do to put money aside. Do you put money into your savings? A very per that's a very personal oh. question, but uh, yes, we are right. learning lots of vocabulary. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, um, I do. In the UK, we often talk about putting something away for a rainy day. And I take that seriously by regularly contributing to my savings accounts. So, yes, you might be familiar with this phrase, putting something away for a rainy day. We can break that into two parts. If you put something away, you put money away. It's the same as putting money aside. So I'm moving some money into its separate space and I'm not touching it. That money is not for spending. It's not fun money. It's not rent money. It's not groceries money. It's for an emergency. It's for a rainy day. A rainy day is an emergency. It could be an accident, like Kat said, your pet getting sick, something in your house breaking, your car breaking down. Those are rainy days. I guess rain is bad. We don't like the rain. We don't like accidents. Therefore, it means a bad day. But we use this only in regards to money. Uh, yeah, money is the only time we mention a rainy day. I wouldn't say I prepare emotionally for rainy days. I prepare money for rainy days. That's what solves a rainy day is cash apparently. So this is an expression for a day with an emergency. So I put something away for a rainy day and I take that seriously by regularly contributing to my savings account. So maybe you have one bank, but you've got several accounts in one bank. So you might have a savings account, a daily account, a current account, and then credit cards. So you might be able to take your income and then choose where it goes. And you might have more in the savings account, a little bit less in the daily spending, and you can really control which account you put money into. So my savings account is for the future, for rainy days. So I'll put some money, I will contribute some money into that account, my savings account. Okay, back to you, Kat. Uh, if you're putting money away each month, how do you avoid overspending or spending too much? So another tip that I follow is keeping an eye on my day-to-day -day spending. Little things like coffee runs and impulse purchases can add up really quickly. So I make sure to track everything. Now, Mark was doing some tracking on his phone. Tracking is following the spending. And especially when it comes to day-to-day -day spending, this is daily spending. This is everything you spend from that cup of coffee to um, a little snack, a little to-go meal, uh, some, you know, if you need gas, if you need um, to buy something for the house, groceries, et cetera. I like to keep an eye, keep an eye on something is another way to say track or to follow it. So I'm keeping an eye on my day-to-day -day spending. Little things like coffee runs. So a coffee run is when you go out and buy coffee, right? A coffee run and impulse purchases. Impulse purchases. An impulse buy or an impulse purchase is when you... At the last moment at the grocery store, see, oh, yeah, some some snacks. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. And you just put them in your basket. You don't even think about it. Your impulse is when you sort of are not stopping yourself, okay? You just, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Snacks. And you, It's not on you the list. Even, it's not on the list, mm -hmm. but it's at the front and it's shiny and you're just bored waiting in line. And, oh, gums. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure, a drink. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and that can start to add up. 
when you're walking home and you see the convenience store and you think, hmm, a soda might be nice or a bottle of water might be nice, yeah? No, those things can add up quickly. So I make sure to track everything. That means that I'm really thinking about what I'm spending day to day. All right. So, Mark, do you have any kind of general rules about money? I just try and be smart with my money. So I'm prepared for whatever life throws at me. Yes, that's it. I try and be smart with my money. Be smart with my budget. Be smart with my money. Be smart with my spendings. Be smart with my expenses. It's a flexible phrase. And it just means I'm spending my money wisely or intelligently. Uh, I don't receive my paycheck and then go and buy 10 video games and then I have no money for food or for rent. That's not being smart. Being smart is being strategic, tactical, thinking about the future, spending a little bit today, but saving some for tomorrow. Just be smart with your money. And that way I'm prepared for whatever life throws at me. <laughs> Whatever life throws at you, whatever life throws at me, these are unexpected situations. It's quite a common phrase that's often fixed with these words, whatever life throws at you. You will definitely hear this in advertising or commercials, like a big car that can go off-road is ready for whatever life throws at you, or <laughs> yeah, having something safe or secure. When you are prepared financially, Accidents and emergencies are not so devastating. It doesn't empty your bank account and leave you with nothing left, or it doesn't cancel your holiday because you had to go to the vet. So being smart with my money helps me for whatever life throws at me, any emergencies or accidents or surprises. So last question for you, Kat. Do you feel like what you're doing with the tracking, the saving, the allocating, do you think that's working for you overall? Yeah. Overall, uh, it's about being financially mindful and making sure your money is working for you, not against you. So the opposite of impulse buying would be doing something mindfully. I think in impulse, you're not thinking about it. You're just doing what comes to your head. You're buying something, you're putting it in the cart, uh, just getting that box from Amazon the next day. Right. I, I, but I think it's more about being financially mindful. So thinking, OK, do I really need that? Do I have the money for that? Should I be saving it and doing something with that money instead? And while you're being mindful, you need to also make sure that your money is working for you, not against you. You hear this a lot in advertising as well. Uh, you know, make your money work for you, not against you. And if something is working for you, it's helping you. It's making you happier. Otherwise, it's working against you and making it very stressful and making it difficult to stay on budget and things like that. So I think overall, it's all about being financially mindful and making sure your money is working for you, not against you. All right. Any final tips before we finish up today, Mark? The last line of my script was, and of course, I always keep a bit of cash on hand for emergencies just in case. So, of course, I always keep a bit of cash. Cash is another uncountable thing. You can have some cash, a bit of cash, a lot of cash, and I have a bit of cash. If someone says that to me, a bit of cash, I'm thinking like 20 pounds, 50 pounds, not a huge amount, but enough. And I have a bit of cash on hand. On hand means it's actually with me. Maybe it's in my pocket, it's in my wallet. I know some people have their phone case and they put some cash under the phone case just in case. So why would I need cash suddenly? Maybe I need to take a taxi and go home quickly. Sometimes it's still useful to have a bit of cash. Some places only accept cash and don't accept credit cards, although that's becoming less and less common. But I keep it just in case. So just for emergencies, I always keep a bit of cash on hand. I've also got my wallet on hand, my phone on hand, my bank cards on hand. They are with me. Ready to use. Ready to use. Mm. 
Yes. All right. So there you have it. Some practical tips and authentic vocabulary to help you get better at managing your finances and talking about managing your finances. Uh, maybe you can try out some of these strategies and see which ones work best for you. What was your favorite tip mentioned today? Have you tried any of these approaches or methods yourself? Do you have some new ideas that you'd like to share with us with some of the vocabulary we learned today? Let us know in the comments below. We read and reply to every single one, and we love hearing from you guys. Yes, that's true. We do. Uh, so please share with us how you manage your money or what your financial strategies are in your country. And don't forget, you can get a PDF transcript of this episode and all our other ones if you join as a High Level Listening member. Like always, there's a link to the, to the membership in the description below. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you again very soon for a new video. Bye-bye.